Hi everyone, in this video I am on page four of the practice set and I'm gonna be going through on numbers 13 through 18 together with you. And just to save a little bit of time, and you may wanna do this as well, I have drawn the skeletal Venn diagrams for all these. Please make sure you are labeling your A and B circles. Also make sure you are drawing the box around that to represent you or the universal set. So 13 through 16 are two Venn diagram circles, whereas 17 and 18, given that it has um, events A, B, and C, those are three Venn diagram circles. And folks, make sure as you're drawing these that you're giving yourself enough space to write numbers into all of those different Venn diagram areas. So let's go ahead and start with number 13. I'll go ahead and zoom in here. Now, um, in previous videos, I started to outline a good strategy, which is to always start with the intersections um, of the Venn diagram. So here it says the number of elements in the universal set is 41. That means everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write that as everything, including the circles. So remember, even though it looks like the U is just the outer region, the U is the box, which includes everything within the box. So U is 41, so I'm not gonna write 41 here because that would just be the outside region. Now, I know the number of elements in A is 16, but I can't really do anything with that either at this point because that's in the entire A circle, which means that some of those elements in there are in the overlap or the intersection region as well. So on this part, we see the number of elements on the intersection of A and B is 12. So woohoo! We can definitely fill in that intersection information right away. And actually, now that we know that there are 12 items on the intersection of those two, we can now figure out how many elements are in set A. So if A has 16 total elements and 16 includes that intersection, that means there are four elements that are only in A. Let's see if we can fill out our remaining regions. We still need to find how many elements are just in B and how many elements are neither in A or B but are in the universal set. So looking at this next piece of information, we see that we've got the number of elements that are not in set B is 20. So let's go ahead and figure out which parts of this Venn diagram are in B's complement. B's complement, or the number of elements in B's complement, consists of everything outside the B circle. So that means four is included in B's complement, but also this missing value in the outer region. So at this point, we currently don't know how many elements are in the universal set, but not in circles A and B. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is X. So if we know that the number of items in the complement of B is 20, we can say four plus X is equal to 20, and thus X is equal to 16. So that means we can put 16 as the number of items that are in the universal set but are not in circle A and B. So let's see if we can complete this problem using the number of items in the universal set. So here, it says the number of elements in the universal set is 41, and that includes everything. So if the number of items in the universal set is 41, that is equal to all of my elements added together. So the number of items in A, only A, the number of items in the intersection, I should zoom out here, which is 12, the number of items that are not in either set, 16, and then finally, our missing element, which is the number of elements that are in just B. So I'm gonna call that lowercase b, so plus b. Actually, we'll go ahead and use uppercase b. 
So those are the elements that are in only B. Actually, maybe we should just go ahead and use a generic variable because folks, I don't want you to get confused that this number over here is not just the number of elements in B because the number of elements in B is 12 plus whatever number we write over here. So you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and call this variable Y. Let's go ahead and use Y over here. So now when I go to solve for Y, we get 41, equals 16 plus 16 is 32 plus y. So y is equal to nine. So that means the number of elements in only b is nine. So folks, we have now answered the question because we have drawn the Venn diagram and filled in all of the spaces for each region. So I hope you can see that for these two Venn diagram circles, we are gonna have the elements only in A, only in B, the intersection, and the elements that are not in A and B, but are in the universal set. So there are four unknowns that we had to fill out. So this is our final answer. And folks, on these problems, I would like to see some work with how you solve for your missing elements. You don't have to use variables X and Y. Um, sometimes people just show work of like 41 minus four minus 12 minus 16 equals nine. That's fine too. You do something that works for you that helps you find those missing values. All right, folks, let's go ahead and look at our next one. So we've got the number of elements in A is 28. Now, I'm not going to put 28 here because 28 includes the elements in just A and the elements in the intersection. The number of elements in B is 12. And again, can't fill anything in because we don't know how many are on the intersection. Now, we know the union of sets A and B is 32. Well, you know what? Normally, I want to use orange for the union rule. I'll go ahead. So I know the union of those two sets is 32. So let's go ahead and see if we can use our union rule to find the number of values in the, or the number of elements in the intersection. So first, let's practice writing the union rule. The number of elements in the union of sets A and B is equal to the number of elements in set A, the number of elements in B, and then minus the number of elements on the intersection of A and B. So there's our setup for what the union rule is. And remember folks, I do want you to eventually have that memorized. So the number of elements in A we know is 28. The number of elements in B we know is 12. So then what we don't know is the intersection. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the variable N for the intersection. Actually, let's use capital N. So we're solving for the number of elements on the intersection of A and B. Now, the union we know has 32 elements. So now I have a happy little setup for an equation that I can use to solve for N. So when I solve this, we get, let's see, we get 40, so 32 equals 40 minus N. Whoop, I forgot I was using a capital, so minus N. <laughs> so subtract 40 and we get negative eight equals negative n, so n equals positive eight. And ta-da, we now know how many elements are in the intersection of a and b. So I can now write eight there. And now I can use this to figure out how many elements are just in a and how many elements are just in b. So if there are 28 elements in the full a circle, if I subtract eight that are on the intersection, that means there are 20 elements that are only in a. Same with B. There are eight elements in the intersection, 12 in B total. So that means there are four items that are only in B. So now all that's left is to find the number of elements that are in the universal set that aren't in our A and B circles. So let's see if we can use this final piece of information to find it. So the number of elements in A's complement is 19. So what regions represent the complement of A? So if I disclude circle A, A's complement would include four, and it would also include this item here, which we need to find. So I'm gonna go ahead and denote that with X. So we know that the items in A's complement is 19. So 19 is equal to four, 
and then plus x. So that means x is equal to 15. So that's what's gonna go in that missing circle. So we have now completely filled out our Venn diagram. We found the items just in A, the intersection of A and B, just in B, and the items that aren't in A and B that are in the universal set. So we found our four values. All right, folks, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And actually, folks, what I would do is maybe pause the video and see if you can try the next two on your own. Go ahead and unpause when you are ready to see the solution. So the number of elements on the union of A and B is 24. So maybe we're gonna have to use the union rule on this one. We'll see. The number of elements on the intersection of A and B is six, woohoo! I know the intersection, so that's always where I would like to start. So we automatically know that there's six items there. Now the number of elements in A is 11. So number of elements in A is 11. So if there's 11 in the full A circle and there's six in the intersection, that means there are five elements that are just in A. So five plus six gives me 11. Now, if the union of A and B is 24, that means Five plus six plus whatever is just in B is equal to 24. So 24 is equal to five plus six plus whatever is just in B. And I'm gonna go ahead and call that Y. So 24 equals five plus six, so 24 equals 11 plus y. So y is equal to 13. So 13 in circle B. Now folks, if you're looking at that going, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. I thought when we used the union rule, we had to subtract the intersection. Folks, remember the difference between what the union rule says and what we just did by totaling up these items to be equal to the union. What the union rule does is it takes the entire circle A, which would be five plus six, and the entire circle B, which would be six plus 13, and then we subtract the six so we don't double count it. So the union rule is more for when you're given just the information or when you're given the full sets. But if I'm looking at the Venn diagram, I can go ahead and just add this plus this together and that's what gives me the union. So note that difference between the straight up Venn diagram and using the union rule. Let's go ahead and use this last piece of information to fill in our last unknown value. I'm gonna call this X again. So this says the number of elements that are in the union of not A with not B or the complement of A with the complement of B is 25. So first, we should probably figure out what region this even represents. So folks, I'm gonna go ahead and use a pencil and designate this shading. So first, it's union. So I'm not looking for the overlap like I am with intersection. I'm just looking for all the shaded regions that are represented by complement of A and complement of B. So complement of A is everything outside of A's circle. Let me get a little messy here. So everything outside of A circle. Complement of B is everything outside of the B circle. So I'm gonna shade in this part of A. So the only thing that's not included in this set is six. So we know that this set has 25 elements. So 25 is equal to the five, plus the 13, so we're leaving out the six, that's the only part that's not shaded here. So five plus 13, plus this X, or the outer region, that I don't know how many elements are there. So 25 equals five plus 13, plus X, so this gives me 18, subtract. And X is equal to seven. So I'm gonna put X equals seven, and that's my final answer. 
And folks, this is why I recommend using pencil because if it starts getting too muddy where you don't think Ms. Carl's gonna be able to read it, go ahead and erase your shading so that I can see the numbers in each of those regions. Let's go ahead and look at our next one. We've got the number of elements in A's complement or the complement of A is 31. Can't do anything with that information except we know that that's the elements that are just in B and the items in the universal set that are not in A. The number of elements in B is 25 can't do anything with that information either. We just know there's 25 elements in the B circle, including the intersection. The number of elements in, ooh, there's that same union that we had in the last problem, which we know is everything except for the intersection. So everything added together except for the intersection is 46. But I still can't really do anything with that. And oh, thank goodness, I was getting a little nervous there that we were going to have some trouble solving. We are given the intersection of A and B has 12 elements, so 12 in that intersection. So let's see if we can piece through the rest of this. So we know circle B has 25 elements. So if there's 12 in the intersection, that leaves 13 in just circle B. Now, what about the elements that are in the complement of A? So if I don't look at the A circle, A's complement includes 13 and these items outside the circles, which I'm gonna denote as X. So using this information, we know that 31 A's complement is equal to 13, the items just in B, plus X, the number of elements that are in the universal set, but not in A or B. So 13 plus X is equal to 31. So then X is equal to 18. All right. So now we just have to use this other information that says everything in the complement of A and the complement of B, or the union of those sets, is equal to 46. So using our shading from the last problem, we know that that is everything except the intersection. So complement of A is everything outside of circle A. Union with complement of B, which is gonna include this part of my A circle. So if I add everything together except for the intersection, that's gonna give me this missing value, which I'm gonna let be Y. So this value, 46, is going to be equal to y plus 13 plus 18. Which gives me y equals 15. So 15 over in the A circle. And we have now completely filled out our Venn diagram. Hooray! So hopefully we're starting to feel better about using our given information to fill out the Venn diagram. Let's go ahead and turn to the next page. And now we are ready to do the three ones. So practice drawing these if you haven't already. And the good news is the strategies that we've used in the two circle Venn diagrams are going to be the same here. We want to start with the intersection and in particular, the very center intersection, which is kind of the center of this little flower. So sort of the middle of those petals. That is the value we want to try to start with, which is represented by the intersection of A and B and C. So the intersection of those three sets is nine. So nine goes in the center. Now I try to use the next intersection petals. So I'm going to look at what other intersections we know. This says the intersection of A and B is 14. Now, if I'm looking at the intersection of circle A and circle B, that is this entire region, including the very center intersection. So if there's 14 in this whole kind of leaf shape, then that means in just this portion of the Venn diagram, we would have 14 minus nine or five. 
let's try to do another intersection. We've got the intersection of B and C has 15 elements. So here's the intersection of B and C. So if there's nine in the center intersection of all three sets, and there's 15 total in this segment, that means there will be six elements just on the intersection of B and C, but not also intersecting with A. Now our last intersection of A and C has 11 elements. So if there's 11 in this entire intersected region of circle A and circle C, that means there are two that are just in the intersection of A and C, but not included with B. So we're still using the same strategy, starting with the main intersection, working to the outer intersections, and now hopefully we can use this information to find our remaining values. So let's go ahead and start with circle A. So we know that A has 28 elements. So 28 is going to be equal to whatever that value is. I'm going to let the X. So the number of elements just in A plus 5, since that's in circle A, plus 2, since that's in circle A, plus 9, that's in circle A. So to find the number of elements that are only in circle A or that X value, we can solve this little mini equation. So let's see, that gives me seven, that gives me 16, subtract, so then we get X equals 12. Woohoo! Let's move on to our next piece of given information. The number of elements in B is 34. So that means everybody in circle B so 34 is the total number of elements in B. So that's equal to the sum of, we'll call this Y, plus the other number of elements in those regions. So 5 plus 6 plus that central intersection of 9. Adding those up, that gives me 15, that gives me 20, so Y is 14. And equals 14. And again, folks, you don't have to use the variables if that's not jiving with your brain, but this is going to be useful once we start actually having to do some algebraic solving for some of these missing variables. So on the homework packet, if you don't want to show this work, you don't have to, but those variable names will become useful later. Moving on to our last circle, the number of elements in C is 25. So in that whole circle, ooh, got a little messy there. The number of elements in all of circle C is 25. So 25 plus, we'll call this Z, not to be confused with a two, so that's why I like to put a line through it. So Z plus two plus six plus that central intersection of nine, 17 and 25 minus that gives me eight. Now, if you're really excited going, woohoo, I'm done, there is one piece we haven't filled out yet. And that's this missing value that um, represents the items that are in the universal set that aren't in A, B, or C. I'm going to go ahead and call this W. So, if you're looking going, what piece of information haven't we used? This sneaky little piece right here that says the number of elements and the universal set is 59. So that means W plus all of the other region items. So if I add up all of the other area, number of elements in those areas, we are going to get what W is. So I'm gonna do W plus, and I'm just gonna say everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that everything else by typing it in on my calculator. So folks, to keep yourself organized with this, I normally start with just in A, the intersection. So I kind of go from left to right. So 12 plus five plus 14. Then I add the middle portion, two plus nine plus six plus eight. So that's my everything else is 56. So 59 equals W plus 56. So W is equal to three. And that is the last piece of info that I need for my Venn diagram. Woohoo! All 
All right, folks, so what I would do is pause the video and see if you can solve this last one entirely on your own. Um, and if you're like, how do I know it's a three circle Venn diagram? Anytime you see A, B, and C, that means you are going to have three events or three circles. So go ahead and pause the video, try this one on your own. Hopefully you started with the central most intersection, which is four, so that means the intersection of all three circles will have a four there. Moving to my outer intersections, the intersection ooh, of A and C is 15, so making sure you're putting that in the right area. Make sure you're labeling your circles A, B, and C as well. So if there's 15 here, and there's four in the central intersection point, that means there's 11 that are just in that region. Moving to our next intersection, the intersection of B and C is 16. So if there are 16 elements in this entire petal region, there are 12 just in that portion. Then, do we have any more intersections? Yep, one more. The intersection of A and B is 22. So if there are 22 elements in this whole region, including that central intersection point, that means there are 18 in that little region. All right, folks, taking it from here, the number of elements in A is 54. So that means 54 in this whole circle. So I'm gonna let this region be X. So 54 equals X plus 18 plus 11 plus that central intersection point of four. That will give me the total elements in A, which is 54. And when I solve this, let's see, that gives me X equals 21. No, 12, sorry. X equals 12, oof. Next, if I wanna find out what B is, ooh, looks like we're gonna have to skip around here a little bit. Folks, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this number of elements in C next, just cause I think this is gonna be a little bit easier to find. So the number of elements in C is 44. So that means in this whole circle, there's 44 elements. So if I let this be Y, 44 equals Y plus 11 plus 12 plus four. And that will give me 17 for Y. All right, so now let's look at these other pieces of information that we have. It says the union of A and B is 85. So that means everything in those two circles. So that would be everything in this circle and everything in that circle added together, making sure we're not double counting the intersection. We can just straight up add all of the numbers in those regions together. And that's gonna allow me to find the number of elements that are only in B. So I'm gonna take 85, which is the union of those two circles, is equal to 12 plus 18 plus Z. I'll do Z first. Z plus 12 plus 18, and then plus 11, plus 12, and then plus four. And this should give me 85 minus 12 minus 18 minus 11 minus 12 minus 4. That gives me 28. And then moving to our last piece of information, the number of elements in B's complement is 63. Oh my goodness, folks, I am so silly. 
That 12 should be a 21. Let me just double check my math there. It's like, that doesn't seem right. 37, so 54 minus 18 minus 11 minus four. That's 21. I am so sorry. Well, my brain wasn't being stupid, but then it thought it was being stupid. All right, so x equals 21. I'll just scratch that out. And folks, I knew that this wasn't right because it seemed a little bit too big for the number of elements in only B. So sorry about that. This is why it's always good to check your answers carefully and to use a calculator when in doubt. So if I change that 12 to a 21, that will give me 85 minus 21 minus 18 minus 11 minus 12 minus 1. And that gives me 19. There we go. So Z equals 19. All right, so phew, diagram's getting a little messy there, but now our only item left to find is the number of elements that are in the universal set, but are not in any of the circles. So how many items are just in the square or just in the rectangle? So let's see if we can use this last piece of information. It says that the number of elements in B's complement is 63. So folks, I'm gonna go ahead and do some shading here to determine what numbers that include. So what items are not in my B circle? That's gonna include, actually I'm gonna color this first. So the number of items that are in B's complement is 63. So 63 is gonna be equal to whatever this number is in the outer region. So I'll call that W and then plus all of my shaded numbers. So I'm gonna start with A and then move this way. So we've got that evil little 21, then the 11, then the 17. And when I do that on my calculator, 63 minus 21 minus 11 minus 17, that gives us 14. So W is equal to 14. So that's what's going to go in that outer region. And that is number 18. All right, folks. And in the next video, we'll start doing some more practice problems together.